is up guys welcome back to my channel now if you follow me on Instagram you know that next week I will be releasing my Belle gold gown tutorial and cinematic video that I shot with Shutterbug art and I'm super excited because this dress is really the pinnacle of my work um, everything that I've been studying and practicing so hard on for the past five years I think has really culminated to this dress and so before I release that I wanted to show a costume analysis, I guess, of the first ball gown that I made that was ever good. Um, and so I wanted to kind of go through all the features of it, where I could have improved things, how I've improved things in the next gown, um, and sort of the best practices to really make a gown that fits beautifully, that flatters, that holds up um, to time and wear and tear. So that is what this video is. Now before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified when I do post that bell tutorial, as well as many more cosplay tutorials tutorials that I have in the works. Alright, so let's get started. So this is my bell gown that I debuted WonderCon 2016 um, and I had made a couple gowns before that time um, but this was really the first one that I was like yeah this is good. Um, I really had an idea of what I was doing structure wise um, and there was um, dedicated intent behind each decision. However, like I said, since um, studying and really working hard to improve my abilities, um, there are some best practices that uh, I have changed since making this gown. So I want to start with the fabric. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is the color of the gold bell gown. Of course, it's animation. You can't really animate a gold color, so they chose a bright yellow. Um, and this comes off slightly more gold in person, but I don't think I chose the correct color like I wanted. I kind of wish the entire dress had been this color, this um, organza, uh, as this is definitely more of a gold color, and then I would have chosen something even darker for these. Uh, but in terms of the base fabric, it's not bad. I think the color palette works together because they are all in the same um, family of colors, which is also another thing that um, tends to be a pet peeve of mine. Um, for, okay, I like the organza. We'll just get that out of the way. I really like the organza. Um, the base fabric is a very light-handed satin, um, and the intent behind choosing this satin was so that it would drape nicely. Um, it doesn't really show up here, but down towards the bottom, you can see it drapes very beautifully. Um, and that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, however, because I use this for princess parties a lot, there's a lot of wear and tear that happens on it. And so, um, you can see here, I'll insert some close-ups, but because it's a very soft, very thin fabric, um, which is necessary for um, draping like this, it wore really badly, and so it just didn't hold up like it should have. Um, I have since used um, much heavier handed fabrics, uh, a taffeta specifically, that drapes just as well. So I don't think you really need to have um, a very light fabric to get this kind of drape. So yeah, I would have chosen a better fabric um, the next time. And then, let's see here. The lace. Um, the lace isn't bad, however, I think it's just kind of childish looking. Um, I don't really care for the lace style here. The flowers just have this like youthful appearance to them that um, didn't quite come across the entire aesthetic of the gown. So I would have chosen, a, well I did choose, I should say, a much um, nicer, higher quality lace um, this time around. And uh, of course I'll go into more details in the actual bell tutorial, but I really didn't spend a lot of money to make this new gown. So you don't have to spend a lot, it's just a matter of thinking through your decisions on your lace choices. But yeah, I do like the gold um, sequins in this lace fabric. It's very, very beautiful, but I don't like these quite obviously yellow, not gold, um, rosettes here. But um, I think the way that I place them looks nice, you know, with a, a little rosette um, on each swag and then in the very center here. Um, I really love this trim down here. 
but I don't quite like the way I finished it. I should have brought the swag trim up to hide the binding on the bodice. Now, speaking of the bodice, um, of course this mannequin is a little small, but um, you see how it just like wrinkles and lays weird? Now the thought process behind when I made this bodice was that I would be wearing a corset underneath so that would um, stiffen the figure and keep posture correct and keep everything nice and tight. And then this would just lay over the top, uh, which is not inherently wrong. Um, that's actually how a lot of um, historical gowns were constructed. Um, again, a lot of my designs are based in historical techniques and historical designs. However, um, for princess parties, even though I do still wear a corset underneath my gowns to support the hoop skirt and the overskirt, um, the bodice really could have done with more stiffening. So on the inside, you'll see there's this floral, um, floral cotton that I lined all the satin with. And then I put boning channels with some quarter inch spiral steel boning. The cotton just doesn't, isn't um, stiff enough, I don't think. So if I had done a layer of twill or a layer of cotille, I could have kept this design um, structure wise. Um, the other thing is, I believe the waist line is right here, the true waist. And so there's not enough flare out for the teeny bit of hip to sit over the hip of the gown. Um, that is another pet peeve of mine is when corset bodices come over the hip for um, ball gowns, a proper gown bodice should go no further than like an inch or two out of the hip and it should be flared out to match the um, circumference of the hoop skirt and the skirts and all that once it's on. So once it's on, it, it doesn't look terrible. It sits pretty close to the waistline, but um, it could have just been better. Let's see here. Let's go to the back. So the back here, um, pardon the crappy lacing, but A, I could have chosen better lacing. Um, the back is boned, the entire thing is boned with quarter inch spiral steels, which I found that quarter inch, but I have found that quarter inch spiral steels just aren't, um, hefty enough to support the body. So I would have gone back with half inch. Those support the body much, much nicer. Um, and then I didn't realize it at the time, but my grommet press was crunching my grommets wrong. Um, it wasn't pressing them. It was like, um, creating little dents in it where it shouldn't be and that kind of destroys your laces too so that's something to be aware of you want to get a nice pressed grommet um, if you have more questions about grommets um, in my corset making video series I have an entire section on just grommets what kind you should use how to proper how to properly apply them etc so yeah and then there also should have been another bone on the other side of the grommets here to really support that because there will be a fair amount of tension and you don't want the grommets pulling out. The entire thing is bound in bias tape and the Bertha, the, the shoulder swag here, was just stitched on, which isn't wrong, that's fine, um, but I probably would have chosen to hide the bias tape a little better and finish off these um, decorative bits a little better. With polyester decorative bits like this, you can just take a lighter to the edges and singe them and it'll um, melt the polyester trim and stop it from fraying. So you can see there's some fraying here and that um, lighter trick would have prevented that. So then onto the waistband of the skirt. Let's see here. So you can see here, it's a little, even though this mannequin is a little small comparatively, it's still too big. Um, so I measured in properly, um, which just comes down to um, doing the math right, doing the geometry right, or following your pattern correctly. And so um, I would always have to pin the dress over like so. Um, I also finished the waist in a um, in the same satin 
and there was no interfacing. So if you're gonna finish your waistbands, excuse you. If you're going to finish your waistbands in satin, you want to interface it, and I did not interface it. Um, since then, I do a bit of twill tape or grill grain ribbon, and then finish it in either the interfaced matching fabric or in a strong cotton of a similar color. Um, you want to have something kind of strong at the waistband because you're going to be supporting a lot of fabric weight there and you don't want it pulling apart. Also, I just didn't get these lined up properly and it's pulling out in some places. Another pet peeve is that the zipper is not lapped, it is quite exposed. Um, I don't really do zippers in my corset, or I don't do zippers in my skirts anymore because um, they, they look ugly and they break and they're not very adjustable. So now I do more of a historical design where it is a two-part waistband. Um, so there's just two slits that are finished and one waistband that you tie around the front to tie up the back and then another waistband in the front to tie up the front at the back, if that makes sense. It's nice too because then you have two points of adjustment. So since it's... if. Uh, multiple people want to wear the dress, then they can just tie the two sides at the waist, leaving a bit of a gap, um, and then because there's like a placket, you're not going to see anything, or you know, you can tie it as tight as you need. Yeah. Um, the ruffling, the ruching that I did here is not bad. Um, I used a ruffler foot. Um, I don't remember what settings it was on, but I kind of played with it to figure out how spaced apart they need to be. But I have since gone back um, on my new gown and I have hand um, done the pleating by hand so that I really get the swags to lay in the way that I want. Um, I think the more intentional look um, just looks better compared to this, which is a teeny bit random. Um, I also wish I had put like piping in between each seam, but that's just more of an aesthetic thing that doesn't really do it. Excuse you. It's more of an aesthetic thing, it doesn't really do anything structure wise. Um, I am glad that I surged all of the seams because satin frays very easily. I hand finished all the seams. I hand finished all the hems on the bottom of the skirt, which um, was not totally necessary. So the panels for each panel of the dress were um, very long, long triangles. Um, and had I done the math properly and figured out each swag um, and how I was going to lay ahead of time, then I wouldn't have had to trim the bottom of each panel once it was all sewn together. But unfortunately, I didn't do that. And so, um, because the uh, ruching here was not even on each panel, I had some panels that um, draped lower than others. Let me try and see. Yeah, you can see here that the bottom edge of each panel is not the same all the way around. It's close-ish, but again, had I just, um, you know, had the forethought to plan it out a little better, I could have had a much nicer finish there. Um, the base here, so it's an underskirt as well. Um, this is fine. This is, you know, pretty typical. You can see here that this hem is not quite even, so that's just a matter of cutting, um, better and doing the math better. Um, but this is, like I said, simple. The gathering is fine. It's just a gathered hem, but the fabric choice, again, it's a very, very light satin and it wrinkles really bad, which you don't want for princess parties because you don't want to have to try and steam this every single time you go to use it. Another thing is I think it's kind of um, not a great idea to choose satin um, for the majority or if at all for princess gowns. Like, generally the idea is that it should be, you know, shiny and princessy and beautiful, but satin just, I don't know, I don't think it photographs very nicely. Uh, it just looks like a cheap costume. So that's just my opinion um, and I don't really choose satin anymore. I think if you do want a bit of a shine, a taffeta is perfect. Um, 
It's got a little bit of texture, so it um, looks more dimensional, but it still has a slight sheen to give that rich appearance. I would go back and actually make all of these seams a French seam. So uh, if this is the raw edge, and then this is the seam here, they're sewn together like that. You have a seam at the top and a seam at the bottom so that all the raw edges are concealed within itself and then the panels come out that way. Um, and I think that's just a stronger, more beautiful seam to do for a gown, especially if you want it to last for princess parties. You really want to try and put as much strength into the dress as possible. Let's see what else. You can see also um, that because it is such a light fabric, it snags very easily. So I've got runs in it and that's just not, that's not something we want. And I think that's kind of it. So uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Of course, if a, a lot of this is opinions, aside from like the structural um, elements that I think are actually quite necessary to produce a good quality gown, um, but the, the stuff like not choosing satin and the, the lace and the color palette, those are all my opinions. Um, so if you want to do that, go ahead. There's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, what I think um, looks more elegant and refined. But, yeah. I think that's it. Be sure to subscribe for the Belle costume tutorial for the new dress. I will be releasing um, the first teaser photos of the new dress shortly after this video goes up. So be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can see that as well as the tutorial coming out a few days after that. Uh, thank you so much for watching and remember cosplay is all about having fun and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!